Greetings in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. I have in store for us tonight a teaching that it is entitled, It is the Jewish Lies, Part 2. It deals with the deception of what is called the doctrines of the Mordem, the feast days, and how they are calculated. And the corruption of those that are called the Lubavitch. These are the ones that have created the terminology and everything that regards the feast days. And you, your leaders, have been caught up in the same sequence. And you're not doing it according to Yah's will. You're doing it from your own polluted perception to hold fast a lie that you're always keeping the Pesach in the fall and the spring of the year and it is not based upon Torah and I want to take us through that parts of that tonight in part one for one hour I want us to understand nation that these are lies you cannot prove any of their calculation by Torah it is deceptive, it is fraudulent, and it is false. And the resources I will use will be their own resources, the Jewish resources. Before I quote this, get to this verse, I want to read this. This is where I go to find everything I need to know about Jews. This is where every Jew goes. Everything about their lives are based upon what's on this website. I have contact many of the uh, congregations. I contact Besheva University there in New York. And they will always direct me to this site. It's not the site they direct you to. They will say, send money. I've written to the rabbi, the rabbi, the teachers. I've written so many. And this is the site. I want you to see there. This is the site that I tend, they will tell you. It is called the Lubavitch. This is the website. Jewish Leap Year. What is a leap year? I have never seen anything of that from Torah. Nothing at all. And this is the site we will utilize tonight and many other resources of their own teachings. I would have begun here because this is vitally important to understand. I would have begun, I want to read something for us from this website. I want you to understand who the Lubavitch is the leap year, and the vile calculations of time. And I will show you exactly where I go. I will give you the website, which I always do. And I want you to understand that. First of all, what is, who are those that are called the Lubavitch Hasidim? These are Lubavitch Hasidim Jews. These are Jews that observe what they call the orthodoxy of Judaism. And you will know them because of their attire. They generally wear. Uh, their clothing is quite plain and basically black and white. That is not a signifier that Yah has ordained in Torah. And then they will tell you they are the men that follow the requirements of the Mosaic law. They leave parts of their hair and whiskers untrimmed. And you've seen them, especially in the major cities like New York and places of that degree. But I want to read something from Torah when he are told, he said to Nobi Yeremiah, Eskel, Ezekiel. Here in Ezekiel 44, verse 20, this 
in the process of his restoration. He says here, Neither shall they go lach, shave to be bald. They should shave their heads. Nor suffer the perach, their locks, to grow long. There are you that you say you grow locks, they all way down to your buttocks. It's a shame for man to have long hair. It is the daughters of the Zion she have long hair. He said, you don't even grow your locks long. They shall only, he used the word chasen. You should only pull. You should only cut, clip, or even shear their head. So this attire that the Lubavitch, you say this is the basic of the Mosaic law, is a lies. It's just for a untrue. And the most well-known group of the Jews today, thanks to the organization of Chabad, I'm reading from their site, the, Lu the Lubavitch, Hasidim are considered both, they are considered to be the most prominent group of Jews. Generally speaking, Chabad, Lubavitch, represent, listen what it represent now, it's on their site. And I am going to show you some things on their site, even tonight. They represent a philosophy and a movement and an organization originally the meanings what it implies and it gives you these acronyms so let me read this quickly the acronym of ch chabad is actually a hebrew acronym for three and that is those three letters, or Chabad, it represents three things, vital and important, intellectual facilities of wisdom. And then the B in Chabad, it is Binah. It represents this knowledge, understanding of comprehension. And the D is for Da'at, for knowledge, for wisdom. And that is what this website of those that are called the Lubavitch, that they are the prima donna of knowledge when it comes to that book written to Yisrael. And the, la the name Lubavitch is the name of a Russian town where the movement was headquartered. The city's name translate from the Russian to the city of brotherly love. They don't name the city, but that's what they tell you. The movement adhered says, conveys the essential of their movement. This is their whole activity in my terms in Lehman. It is that there is a love for every Jew just for every Jew. And we must understand from their own history, it was established around 250 years ago. 250 years ago, and this is what it says here, quote, Chabad, Lubavitch, Judaism, finds its roots in the Hasidic teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. During the 18th century, Baal Shem Tov saw the many simple people without much learning or knowledge being overlooked by great thinkers who saw them as simple commoners. They were common people. 
And their first rabbi of Chabad was Rabbi Shunir Zalma. And he died after he passed. I would always, honestly, back in the days, in the 80s, latter 70s too, latter 70s and 80s, I would watch Rabbi Menachem Mendel Shizran, Mr. Shirisan. I would watch them as they were bringing Hanuk and all those. He died in 1984. I recall I would watch that. We did not have the kind of network back then that we have now. And it was on PBS. You would see them in Russia. Everywhere, Russia. London, all the majors, Australia. And I would sit, I would watch, and I would watch this man, long beard, white. And when he would stand up, the place would go quiet. The statue was diminutive. He was not a large man. And then when he was stepped back from the podium, they will began to sing. I always mimic the way they would sing. And they would go, speaking in their tongue. I can only say it or sing it the way it sounds to me. But it was, they will make those sounds. And I was intrigued with it. I was ignorant, didn't know even nothing about them. And so when Shears son would walk back to the podium, everything was quiet. And then once he began to speak, you could hear a feather fall on cotton. That's how he was regarded. And yet, their concepts are based upon lies. The Doma. You notice what I said? A philosophy. And that's not the way it works, nation. It is based upon the principle of the truth and the Torah of Almighty Yah. And that is why Yochanan in 1 John 2.21, he says, ha, ha, I have not written to you because you know not the truth, but you know it. And that no lie, pseudos, is of the truth. None. And one of the most destructive lies that all groups, Jews and Hebrew Israelites, they all have bought into that lie. It is the 13th month. It is a Jewish lie. While you can never get things organized back unless you have a 13th month, that we follow the Hanukkah calendar. You're still a flat out liar. Now I have looked for the feast days of the Hanuk calendar congregations. And all I find on the sites that I've been able to discover over the years, many years, is just a bunch of color, coloring of their uh, of their statements and all of that. You can't you can't even figure it out. And Hanuk talks about 364 days. And I ask all you scholars, you have never kept, even you that say you are Hanuk calendars, you utilize that. It is always this, please hear me. You're going to celebrate a feast day in 2020. From 2020, to 2021, it will be precisely either 353 days, 354 days, or 355 days. From one Passover to the next, 
from 2021, from 2022, I'm just utilizing this as an example. It will either be 353 days to the next one, 354 days or 355. And you will go in that sequence of time, just go and look at your schedule for the feast days. I'm telling you the truth. I know what I'm telling you. And then every third year, you always hear them say, we have not found the barley. Am I telling the truth? And then there is where the leap year is inserted. Show me the term leap year in Torah. Show me where the Torah utilized the ikonach. That is one of the most blatant lies from the dungeons of darkness, from hell. Nowhere. Well, it's equal of time. That's a lie. That's a lie. I use all the mechanisms that, that are available to you. There is only one day in close proximity of 12, 12 hours in the land that is called Yerushalayim. And it is around June 10th. That's it. You can utilize the service of a website called Times and Dates. It will give you the time, the dates. It will go by every second, every hour. It shows you everything. And I utilize that because there is no equal or equivalent of time and date every year during this pagan form, no different than Easter, and you follow pursuit. I will not. It makes no difference if no one receive me. I will go the route that Yah has commanded us. And do your research on the 13th month. It is a lie. It is that corrective action that they take every three years because they use what they call, it is what is called the Metanech. It is Metan. He was a scientist, an astrologist. Uh, he was from Greek. He was a Greek man. And he studied the sun, the, 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 the moon and the stars for 19 years. So every 19 years, you're going to have seven intercularies. There will be a year that will be 353, 383 days, 384 days, or 385. There has never been the cycle that you keep your more dim. It has never been a 364. It has never been a 365. It has been a 353, 354, 355, or 383, 384, or 385 days. You have never kept a feast day according to this system of the Lubavitch. And then most of your leaders can even explain it. I want to teach you something today, all right? Now, I utilize all forms of informative information. This is a statement that was written in the Washington Jewish Week.com. Washington Jewish Week.com. GNS dot org. Quote, traditions has it that it was a great or the man that is called Hilial. I have written a composition on these lines. It's on our website. But his name is Hilial. He was the head of the Sanhedrins, those that Matithia talks about in chapter 26, 59. That's one verse. He was the head of the Sanhedrin. They say from 320 to 385 before the common era, who created the Jewish calendar through some pretty sophisticated 
mathematical and astronomical calculation. Where did you tell us that? It is the moon, none other. The results, now this is a lie that I know because of research. It was not Hillel that discovered the 19-year cycle. It was Metan, Melchan. It is called the Metanech. Go online and you can find that. He was a Greek man. And there were others, and there are others that gives you more correct time than even this 19-year cycle. It is a cycle that has formed the basis of the Greek and Hebrew calendar. Yah gives everything to form. The calendar for Yisrael. He did not impart that to no man. He gave us his calendar. And it is used for the computation of the date of Easter each year. The Babylonians, the Babylonians applied the 19-year cycle since the late 6th century with seven leap years to anchor the holidays in the righteous place or rightful. Is that not what the Jews do? Show me where Yah commands us that. Isn't that what the Hebrew Israelites do? Isn't that what the vast populace, this is the same cycle that they use. It's no different nation. And it is fraudulent, full of lies. It is not of Yah. It is not. And I say this emphatically. You cannot, you will not find that. Especially with those that say we, we have Hanukkah, we use this calendar. I've never found, and I'm looking. You that a Hanukkah calendar reverence want, send me one of the calendars in the sense, show me in your discipline, in your writings, how do you determine that? This is not of Yah. It is not the cycle of Yah. Seven leap years. You don't even find that in Torah. You don't even find a solar lunar calendar. The only thing that the word solar reference in Torah, it is the word yom. Y-O-M. And some places it's spelled Y-O-M-E. And it takes in the account that the day is ruled by the sun. It is a lunar solar day. But there is no place where the word solar is used nowhere in Torah. And the only thing that reference anything that is solar, it is the word yam. And I'd love for you to challenge me. We can't grow without that kind of of being challenged. Now this article was written by Deborah Feinblum. You know that's Jewish. Deborah Feinblum. I want to go to their sites. Let me pull this up. I want to go to this site. This is where every Jew goes. I have called written, the rabbi, the rabbi, the teachers, they all recommend this site. This is the mother of philosophy and creation of all that is Jewish. And I've visited this site over the many years so that I can retrieve from their information to refuriate it because it is based on lies, witchcraft, it bewitched the mind, and people don't want to hear the truth. They will recoil away from you. Let me let me read this. Hallelujah. This is they're talking about the feast days. And this is a comment from one of their own. Jewish scholars. It says this, 
His name is Alfred from Texas. Is the leap year biblical? Is it identified in Torah? Tell me, people. I know that it is not. It is a lie. And then he goes on to say, is there any way to keep the fixed days without the leap year? Is it any way? <clears throat> and so this is Elazir Zalmunu. He responded, there is no way for the biblical holiday of Passover to always occur in the spring. Listen now. This is the leader. He responded, Mr. Elazir. There is no way for the biblical holiday of Passover to always occur in the spring without an occasional leap year. So where did Yah command us that there must be leap year? I have teachings I have taught us from the first time, the word first month, second month. There is nowhere found the intercularies. How did Noach know that it was the seventh month? Because he has given us the greatest sign to determine all things. And that is the moon. So that's it. There is no way Yah never intended for it to be that way. Because his people, first of all, they're scattered in every part of the world. The Hebrew Israelites say, oh, oh, oh Judah, Yehuda. That's all they talk about. He scattered his people to the four corners. Not the Olam, but the Eret, the four corners to the extreme, to the Kesef, Kesef, to the ends of his creation. And they're everywhere. And their skin complexion looks different. The facial features, they don't all look like me. And they don't all look like you. The skin tone is not yours. And I'm going to debunk and destroy this lie. 1619. It's a lie. I don't want to engage in that tonight. I've got history and maps to prove what I say. You just repeat things without understanding the substance of it. So this is the leader that, that responded to the young man's question. This is another question. I am going to take my time with this teaching. This is just part one. He is from Nigeria. His name is Yisrael. He said in response to Alfred, I'm tired of that leap year because it is not biblical. It is not biblical. It is not the truth. It is not Torah doctrine. It is not a statue of God. So please tell me if you know the truth about this. The world doesn't know the truth about it. No more than the Christians about their Satanic lie and their Easter bunny bells. That is the truth, my friend. He does not indicate nowhere. This is from the site where all Jews go. <clears throat> then John Steenman from Fresno was 3,787 a Jewish leap year. Now, these are the questions and the discussions they discuss. I wanted to bring that up because this, I will use this site and the teaching of this. Here is a question asked concerning the leap year, the 13th month. You know that's insane nation. Your fearful men to move away from these lies. You're flat out afraid. And you're fearful. Here's the question asked. Why was it necessary for the 13th month? 
This is the response from the scholars. Passover in July, Rosh Hashanah in January, sure, sure. That is what will happen if there was not for the ingenious. You call a law something that is ingenious. Invention of the Jewish leap year. You notice that it is a Jewish leap year. So your liars to guide the people in lies, and you know you're lying to them. That's why you don't try to teach them how to figure out these things. It's an easy format that even an ignorant man of my degree, no degree of learning, could understand. And this is what the rabbi says, that because lunar calendars like this one works beautifully until the end of the year when the 12 lunar months will eventually miss the solar year by 11 days short. You think God did not know that? He knows what he's doing. It would take a long, it would take long for such disparity to wreak havoc with the holidays. That's a lie. That's a flat out lie. Hence, the specter of snow covering Rosh Hashanah leap year, the 13th month is added. I ask any of you scholars, please help me. Show me where there is an indication in the book, in Torah, in the writings of the Nobi'in, and the messengers of Yah, where it talks about a 13th month. I have searched this book for over 40 some years. And over the last 20 plus on subjects like this, it's not found. This is what it says in First Melachim, First Kings 6, 37. In the fourth year of the foundation of the bed of Yah laid. And it tells us this. In the Yerach, in the lunar month of Zith. The Torah speaks of only the lunar month and the time and the space of the year. That's the only thing. And this rabbi goes on to say, and the Torah makes it abundantly clear, Passover must be in the month of springtime. That is a lie from the gutters of hell. It's just a lie. The name of the month bears a meaning, but that's not what he said. He says this in Devarim 61. He tell us to watch Shema and observe the month of Obi and keep the Passover to Yah. He said, just watch. What are they watching for? Barley? Now nah, they're watching that most profound sign that he laid down from the foundation of the earth, the moon. He says, this is what Yah tells us to do, and we shall keep the Mo'odim, or the Mo'at, in that time. Because Yah, your Abab, bless you in all your increase, in all your works of your hand. Therefore, you shall surely rejoice. We're easily to be deceived. We're gullible. Because we don't want to go against the grain. I go against every lie. And these are lies. And these are Jewish preposterous lies. We will prove all things by Torah. And then it says, in our agricultural tradition, says Rabbi Rechel Ai, religious leader of the Sutton Place Synagogue in New York City. So on one level, the pilgrim or the pilgrimage holiday all reflects the agriculture cycle of Yah. It's a flat out lie. Yah knew that his people would be in places because of our sins 
He would scatter us nation. They did not just come to America. He scattered them to the four corners of the world. And I don't know how you buy that violent lie. So you tell me, I got a teaching on this. You tell me he grabbed all your hold down, put them on ships, and sent them here. Well, what about the ships of the 1400? That, uh, let me inject this before I go farther. That is the thing that has always amazed me, that Brazil has more people there that were shit sent over on those Spaniard ships. They have more people than Cuba. A hundred million people in Cuba. You would not think that. But they have more than any. But on the Hebrew Israelites chart, they omit just Brazil. Who are they? Who are those? Those were the first ones sent on slave ships. And you say the Indians are, they are Hebrew Israelites. Well, what ship did they come on? Had to be before 1619. Tell me, my friends, your thesis is predicated upon lies. And I do regard the elders of the time before me. But they didn't know. They could not understand words the way I do. They did not have the resources to go beyond just a visual thing. They learned by the way of hearing and the way they trust. Many could not read. I'm going to show you the architect of the Hebrew Israelites in America and who the men were and what theses a doctrine they were persuaded by. I have thousands of teachings and I would love to be able to do them all. I'm getting older every day. And so my energy level is not the same. It's just not the same. Let me read number two of their thesis. When it talks about what they call the great leader Hiliel. 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 It says a tradition. Has it that it was the great sage Hiliel. He was the head of the Sanhedrins for a certain time. And he was the one that's implemented this time or the season. I want to read this. It quotes, as far distant past the Jewish people rely on the nature to tell them when a leap year is needed. That's just a flat out lie. Because everyone in America that say that they love Yah, celebrate is more than, they all do the same thing. And so this is out of the mouth of the leaders, those that orchestrated this calendar, that is a lie. And then it says this, because I respect Ramadan, I respect their honesty. It says, quote, which is why Ramadan can be in the winter. So Pesach too. It can be in the fall, spring, or summer, explains Werbel. Yah intended that. Because those that are in the southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, eastern, as we learned when I was in my segregated school, there are those that are in the eastern hemisphere, those that are in the nation, on the continent of Africa and beyond, their winners are our summers. Their springs are our fall. And they must celebrate it every year in the winter with this system. And when it moves according to Yah's time, they were celebrated in the summer like us. They were celebrated in the winter like us, in the spring and fall. They weren't. And it's because of the Jewish influence. Those that ordain and tell you 
And there is this foolishness that men even say, well, we, we, we've talked to those in Israel. You can't grow nothing in that land. It's fake. You know it is. There's nothing there that is natural but brambles and things. Everything is imported into that land. You know that. You know that. And as far as barley, you, barley is not even grown in the world. Go to the Agriculture Department of Israel and see how much barley is grown. It is not even insignificant. It is not even significant enough. It is so insignificant. They don't even utilize the stats of that for that nation. Well, how do you know you think you're smart? No, I research things. So I know. Well, they didn't find the barley this year, so uh, why every three years? Let, let me finish this. Explain verbal. We cannot do that because, look at what he says. We cannot do that because we're, the, we're guided by our Torah. Show me what the Torah says that. Yah tells you to keep it. Start the first month. And it makes no difference. So you've added months. You added a 13th month. We got about the Torah, which says pace, pace, Passover must come in the spring. No, it didn't say that. We planted and the things needed to grow during that time. Shauts, the harvest of Sukha, Hila realized that if we stay strictly lunar, what did Yah give us though? Things will soon get out of kilter. And he, that this was Hillel, he put in this system to fix that, which is the leap year. And this is a bogus lie. He did not do that. I have a composition online that discussed this. I got enough material right now over the years that I've studied this the many that I could easily put together a 500-page book my commentary and what I've learned from their scholarship. Nowhere in the Torah where Yah says, I want it, we must add an intercalary. It's not so. It's not so, period. And so the Lubavitch, they have created their own lies. And every organization that call themselves keeping Passover, they follow that same construct. All of them. I don't, and I will not. Makes no difference what one says. It talks about Rav Hillel and friends came up with, this is a total fabrication of lies. I've searched this 19-year cycle containing seven leap years a 13 month and that's why you you will keep it listen to me my friends you that just even venture on this teaching let me show you what they say what the site of the Lubavitch says quote but without an advanced degree wow in mathematics or physics what do I need that for? These were the common people that farmed in agriculture. So you had to have a science degree to understand Yah's word or the cycle. Let me re-quote. But without an advanced degree in mathematics or physics, you may not be able to predict when they shall arrive. You don't even know what you I don't have to predict the moon and that's why we watch for the moon and the next moon will be in this month on the 24th and we will be moon watching not looking for a demon neck for a chimney now nah, and we all have chimneys in our homes here because we heat by words this is what this fool said and their scholar says and then he says, quote, so what? The only way to know if a certain year is designated to be a leap year. 
How do I know when I'll leave you come? Well, it's not that difficult because they tell you. And you'll know when you keep the feast days. That year between those two times, you would have kept it at 354 days. And so from that, that Pesach of that year, then the one next one will be either 383 days, 384 days, or 385 days. It's a cycle to bring you back to the spring. Look what he says. I want to keep this within one hour because I want you to listen and learn. And I don't want to bear you down because I could teach this for hours, but I am not. This is what he says here, quote, quote. So what? what's the only way to know if a certain year is designated to be a leap year? These are not my words. These are the words of the Lubavitch. It is by knowing the year's place in a current 19-year metanach, a metanic cycle. I had one that wanted to beat me. He was a teacher and all of that. And he gave me this bogus, insane reasoning. I'm like, that is so stupid, my friend. He writes to me one day and say, your feast days from that year to that day, well, that were 354 days. So I sent the man a list of those that theirs were 354 days as well. The only thing that with my keeping and your keeping is that that third day, I don't follow that lie that there is an intercalary and then there's a 13th month. Why every third year? Why every third year? Uh, let me show you the cycle of that. The third year, you will have an intercalary. The sixth year, and it's something between the sixth and the eighth. The eighth year, there are only two years. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to make up a chart. I'm going to get my teachings like this more professionalized. Uh, I need help with that. And then it's in the eighth year, the eleventh year, the fourteenth year, and the seventeenth year. This is the cycle. And that's what Every Hebrew Israelite follow the same cycle. Because their camps are different from one another. They don't embrace each other. They call each other some of the most. I am not. I identify as the son of Avraham. Seed of Yisrael. That's who I am. So this 19-year cycle is represented in these years, the third year. Count them up, you'll see. I think next year you all will have uh, the intercularity. You will add a 13th month. I'm not sure, but I believe that because I don't keep up with it. I keep up with the moon, and we watch it, and our children love it. And we will all be out there on the 24th of that pagan line. And we will all be looking for the moon. We're not looking for some demon nick. And you look at a leap year. Every third year, there's a leap year. Hear me out, nation. The sixth year is a leap year. The eighth year. Those are the only two whereby there's a two-year cycle. The, the 11th year, the 14th year, and the 17th year. And then the 19th year. Those two between the 17th and the 19th, they count that zero. You can learn more than I understand. But we can't be lazy. We just, well, I'm not going to debate that. I will debate you. I will debate them. I will debate them. And so Hillel, Hillel and his friends were pretty, quote, good at math, says Mitchell Bogarts of New Haven, Connecticut, base engineering, and avowed physics bluff. He was just a liar. That's a fact. He was just a liar. Nearly 2,000 years ago, they were sharp enough with their calculation to realize the Jewish calendar had to have a 19-year cycle to keep up with the 11 days difference at bay. It was the only way to stop the holidays from shifting more than a couple of weeks here and there. Nothing significant. Where did y'all come on? 
any man or any people that there is, I don't even find intercalary in Torah. I don't find it. Nowhere. And we're going to really get deep into this website, this Lubavitch. Here is one of the other reasons why they do this. And you follow that same pattern. They call it the Jewish leap year. Jena mi ubrach. Literally meaning a pregnant year. They call it the pregnant year. That's the truth, nation. This is what their scholars taught them. And then they say in their fifth law and principle of this foolish cycle, that's what it is. This is what they say. Five, and due to the nature of the month, they're talking about what they call Idrar. That gets added an extra ida. I don't see in Torah. Show me anyone, please, what the word extra month is commanded in Torah. One thing the leap year is a pregnant year with an extra helping of joy and blessing and mazel mizel. The word mazel mizel means luck. I don't even use that word in my vocabulary. For nearly 40, not nearly over 40 some years, they're words I don't use. I eradicate them. It is called luck. And they're dealing with a god of luck. That's what the god is. Who is that god? You can tell now. I read you the fifth statement. I want to show you what the Torah says. In Yeshayahu or Yeshayu, Isaiah 65, 11. This is their terminology. Mazel Mizel. Mazel Mizel. God of luck. Do you all hear that? This is what the Nobi Isaiah says. Yeshia. But you are they that forsake Yah. That you forget my Kodesh mountain. And not only that, you prepare a table for the God of luck, fortune, God, Bobel, deity. This is the God of luck. And that furnace drink offerings to the God of fate, Menai. This is what I am. These scriptures, they don't have them. I examine what they say by scripture. For the Jewish people, as the sage taught, when Ada enter, we increase in joy. Well, that's not the way I see it. When the morning and the sun rise, <clears throat> that is the excellence of my joy to be alive. This is what the Lubavitcher, this is what their rabbis and their rabbis, these are the lies they teach. These are the lies they teach. And these are lies. This is one from reformjudaism.org, the leap year. I use an assortment. I dig for hours and I look to point out their lies. This is from reformjudaism.org leap year. And everyone I've contact, they lead me to the site of the Lubavitch. It says here, <coughs> excuse me, quote, by many cultures which depend upon an exact knowledge of the phases of the moon, not the sun, confront this problem with a very different approach, like the Chinese and the ancient Babylonians and the Jewish calendar includes an extra month to the calendar in a fixed system developed more than two millenniums, 2,000 years ago. 
seven times in a 19-year cycle, you had nothing to do with that. This was the intellect of the Greek, the scientist, Metan, that he developed. And there's a system I will show you. I, I've studied these systems that is much more refined than his. And that is the system that a lot of Jews are turning to. Their feast days are the same every year. Almost on the same, not as far as date, but on the same day. The days that their feast days cannot fall on. It cannot fall on a Shabbat evening. and it, You cannot have that. Do the research, you will find out. And I'm against every violent, evil concept that they have laid to twist your mind and have twist my mind. And so I want to mind Yoshua HaMashiach. And that's the only mind. So where does Yah talk about a second Adar? This period, 19 year cycle, is known as the Mazor. The Mazor, and that is the name of a prayer book for the Jews. It is called the Mazor, and that's what they utilize. These are their scholars speaking on the leap year. This is from www.timeanddate.com. Date, Jewish leap year. It says this, a leap year is a Jewish calendar has 13 months and occurs seven times in 19 year cycle. It is called the Metnech, Metnech. In Hebrew, a leap year refers to uh, uh, as a Shana Mi Ubratch, a pregnant year. Where does Yah even talk about a pregnant year? I'm going to stop here because I want to advance this and take it much farther that you will understand. I want you to know everything I know and you can refuriate me and rebuke me and show me where I'm wrong. This I'm not wrong. This delusional false lies of the feast days it's a lie. you gave us the moon. That's what he gave us. And nothing else. He gave us that. And nothing else. I want to close with one verse here. His Yerach. That's what he gave us. He gave us that. And nothing else. And that is why the month, even the word month. Let me read this one verse for you. Hallelujah. And then you will see. I have quite a few. One, two, three, four monitors here. It says this. The first place the word month is mentioned in Torah. It is Bereshit, Genesis. Chapter 7, verse 11. It amazed me that Yah has written things in this book, and yet they have not changed at all. It says this, In the 600th year of Noach life, look how precise he is, in the second Chodash, in the second month. That's amazing. In the second month. Look how precise Yah is. The 17th day of the month, of the same day, where all the fountains of the deep broke up, and the windows of Hashemayim, they will show lach, open. I have searched every verse in this book that pertains to this lie. Forgive me, Yah. Believe me. I have gone through the volume of this book. 
Leap Year is a Lie. And I'm going to start there next. We'll be having service. Zokinya Ramiya will be teaching on, on tomorrow evening. And uh, I'll come back with this as I add other videos uh, to the uh, to our list. And I want to show you the community so you may understand our lives here and what we do. To be encouraged, nation, I am going to stop there. And then I will have the next teaching. I am going to teach this for some time. This is part two of this teaching. And I want you to understand. And don't be afraid. There was a daughter of Zion that called and she says to me, Reagdaiweed. She said, I just want to start over from the beginning. We bring a lot of trash into this walk. Your Baptist ways, your Christian, is nothing but trash. You got to cast all that away from you, your Jewish lying ways. Saying, may the riches of your rest upon you, all oh, my friend, I say to you all, Shalom, Shalom, Yabaruch.